Hey everyone, I hear that hospitals across the land have now given up asking patients if they can remember who the Prime Minister is because this last week there was only one story, Liz Truss's discovery that a week may be a long time in politics but 44 days is a darn short time to be Prime Minister. Although to give her some credit, she did manage to outlast Pope John Paul I as well as Brian Clough's management of Leeds United. I think of her a bit like one of Henry VIII's wives in so much as not many of us have ever actually seen her in person and she's most likely to be remembered as someone who turns up in the answers to a pub quiz in years to come. For me, I knew the game was up when Penny Modden told the Tories to get behind Liz, because typically conservative politicians only get behind someone when they've got a knife in their hand. In most other lines of work, six weeks would be considered seasonal labour, whether it's picking hops at a farm in Kent, being the Santa Claus at Tesco, or when a removal company in Westminster realises they need a few extra hands to deal with all the work they're being asked to perform. If the next PM was forced to call an election, that could potentially mean four Prime Ministers in one year, at which point I think Graham Brady's filled up his card and he gets a free coffee out of it. Anyway, Liz Truss's tenure in the job does come with the one benefit that she gets a hundred grand for life, assuming she's shameless enough to claim that pension. <laughs> what am I talking about? She's a politician. She used to work in marketing and she was a Lib Dem at one point. Obviously, she's going to claim it, although she's not as dishonest as matter, which, according to physicists, makes up everything. Uh, I guess talking about well-paying jobs or the people making out and all of this are the removal company that the civil service pays to shift the prime minister's possessions. Boris made a few references to the Roman leader Cincinnatus on his way out. Cincinnatus famously stood down as leader before being asked to come back a couple of years later. But really at the moment number 10 seems more like the late stages of the empire where the position was for sale. Hence Rishi Sunak's coup d'etat, which is frankly what it is, with him being ushered in with this sort of public enthusiasm you normally only see at a cancer diagnosis. Why Rishi even wants the job, I've got no clue he's going to be out of a job in two years after all. Ah well, for now let's just bask in the unfolding of history. After all, days like this only come around once every few years. I mean, no, once every few months, after all. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe. Bye.